Hey, you guys. This is episode 50 of the Elbow Nudge Podcast. The big five of what podcast? The Elbow Nudge Podcast. That's right. Episode 50, Elbow Nudge. We're here. We're going to be talking about the Goonies. This, we're here for the spooks and the goons. The now, Goonies. Caroline. Oh, do yeah. you want a proper introduction or just jump right in? Oh, what? Uh, I'm Caroline. This is Tony. We're talking All Goonies. Right. We're talking Goonies. Now, what were you going to say? It's not a horror movie. <laughs> I was wondering, just in my own brain prior to this, I wonder how long it's going to take Tony to mention that this is not really a horror movie. I have to say it at the front of the episode at because the it's, very beginning. it's El Boo Nudge. People want to be scared, as do I. But when we saw The Goonies on HBO, it did say somewhere horror and part of, you know, part of the genres. It did. Yeah. And, and I've been trying to look for it again and I cannot find it. I, I did when, you know, when we were doing our El Boo prep, we were looking up films. I did see because, you know, I'm the resident scaredy cat of this pod. I was looking up like, what are Halloween movies that are not too scary? And it, I think I found a list on a website where it was like, top Halloween films to show your kids that are not too scary. I was like, perfect. And Goonies was on there. Goonies was number one. What? Yeah. So did this was, scare you at all? And the, the beginning did have a jump scare. I think that, you know, oh, yeah. let's, let's not discount it completely. The beginning did get like it, it gave a jump scare, but that's it. The rest of it is just a huge adventure, pirates, uh, yeah, it's one-eyed a wonderful Willy. Movie. Yeah, that's a wonderful film. But yeah, you're right. It's not. I would not classify it as a horror film. But I, I did see it with you somewhere. It did say horror. Yes, it did say it on a genre, and I can't find it anymore. Yeah, I was looking again, and I cannot find it. They probably realized it was a mistake too, and they took it down. Maybe. But, you know, I do think that this movie has like a Halloween vibe to it in the sense of like it's kids going on an adventure. Some I, I wouldn't call it scares, but I would call it danger happens to them and they have to overcome it with, you know, power friendship kind of thing. Yeah, it's very much like the trick or treating aspect of kids going trick or treating with their friends in a neighborhood and coming across like a mystery or whatever. Maybe so. And I don't know what time of year it was. It looked fall-ish. <laughs> but the goondocks seem like a nice place to trick-or-treat. So The goondocks do look pretty cool. It's yeah. a very pretty area. They're in... Uh, you remember how we were trying to figure out where they were? Like, just throughout yeah. the film? They're in yeah. Oregon. I think we figured it out during the movie. I remember saying that because some, there's some signs that you see, like, at the museum and things like that. Yeah, they're in Astoria, Oregon. Yeah. So I guess it can work. Yeah. But you know what? This movie is pretty cute. I don't know if I've laughed as much during a movie watch than I did for this movie. It got me a good amount of times. The one I I was trying to rewatch the movie uh, during the day, but... I was binging another show and I was like, let me go and watch the highlights of the Goonies real quick. <laughs> okay. And the one that got me just on the rewatch was when uh Chunk is he's escaped or whatever and he's in the road and that car approaches him and he's like, Hey, uh, I need to get out. like I need to go to the sh- can you drive me to the sheriff's office? The Fratellis are out here. And I need to go report them and the light turns on and it's the Fratellis. Is it Fratellis? And he goes, Baru. The guy just starts singing an opera. And then he goes, ah! Oh, that, that got me good. There's a lot of good moments. <laughs> I, I really like when the mom comes in when all the kids are at the house. And then she's like yelling at them like they, they've already made a mess. Yeah. And then they're trying to hide the statue that they broke. Uh huh. And she's like, What? What is that? What like, is that? <laughs> they're so nervous. And then she's like, you're going to clean that up, right? He's like, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's like so happy. <laughs> Chuck is like, yes, we're going to clean that up. <laughs> He's like, just that? All right, perfect. You got away with it. I love these kids so much. And 
You know who ended up being like my favorite character in this whole movie? Data. Is your boy Josh Brolin. Oh. As Brand. Why is that? Because I just, you know, I, I think I also told you this, like Jonathan was one of my favorite characters in Stranger Things. We, we'll have to circle back to Stranger Things because there's so many influences. We're definitely going to talk about Stranger Things. Yeah, there's Don't so many. Don't worry about that. So many parallels. But like, yeah. I love that older brother, that caring older brother. He wasn't like a, they had moments where, you know, they would push each other and fight and stuff. But ultimately, like he's taking care of him. He's He's along for the ride. He's not there to tell him. Like, oh, you're an idiot. You're stupid. Let's go. Like, he he's in. He's he's there to help his bro. He just wants to keep him out of danger. Yeah, they definitely love each other. And they poke fun at each other, just like brothers do. Mm-hmm. But overall, he's looking out for him. Yeah. He wants to be there for him. Yeah. yeah. I like him a lot. He's the responsible one. He's the leader of the pack kind of thing. Making sure everybody's safe. He's the man. He uses the man room. Brand the man. Yeah. The men's room. The men's room. <laughs> The only thing is, I wonder why they kept those shorts on sweatpants for him. I feel like he should have. It's very them. heroic, you know. <laughs> it's classic hero. I mean, Richard Donner, you know, director of Superman, underwear over the pants. Oh yeah. I'm oh, finding yeah. connections here where there are none. But <laughs> none of this is confirmed. I'm just, you know, imagining. I'm trying to put it together. You're finding connections where previously no one has seen. Yeah, until now. But until this moment, this podcast. I mean, you know, Superman was definitely on the brain. He used the Superman theme for Sloth when yeah. he took off the jacket or whatever. Superman was. Superman shirt. Yep, definitely on the brain. Doesn't isn't he watching Superman at one point or no? No. Not that I remember. I thought it was always the pirate stuff. It's the pirate. That's right. That's right. I'm trying yeah. to think of that song. That's like dun 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 dun. dun. Yeah, that's it. So what about these other kids? You know what? I, I got to be honest. At first, I Here thought I thought Chunk and Data were really annoying at first. <laughs> just, just that opening scene is so chaotic. And especially when like getting into the house and like Chunk is doing like his belly wiggle and the truffle Data- shuffle. Yeah, the truffle shuffle. And Data is like bursting through the screen door. I was like, oh, these are the double O negative. I got double O negative. Double O seven. I thought at first that they were kind of annoying. But as the movie went on, I was like, no, these are these are the Goonies. Goonies never say die. They're a crucial part of the team. I can agree with you a little bit. I didn't think any of them in particular were annoying, but while they were like all yelling at each other and making jokes and stuff, I did feel like a back to the future moment. And I was thinking like, you're just too darn loud. (laughs) These, but they're just, it's just so much noise. Yeah. A lot of noise in this movie. There's a, there's a lot of noise and just like, not even the opening scene or, or when they're all in the house throughout the movie, they all like to talk over each other. Yeah. There's a lot of noise in this movie. But it's so accurate to how <laughs> kids are, though. Yeah, yeah. It really is. Just with my niece and nephew, they talk over each other to try to talk to me. And it's like, all right, they don't get you know to wait for each other. They're just going to yell at me and hope that I hear something. They're going to hope the that same you time. hear both of them at the same time. They're going to info dump you. Yeah, yeah. This movie nails kids. Like They just have, they accurately portray the kids. And I feel like that's... One of the th- reasons maybe this movie is so beloved is that the kids get to be kids. They're acting crazy. They're acting, uh, you know, there's the good side to them. We're like, we're going to solve this mystery. But it's because they have this like noble cause. They want to stop their house from being foreclosed. And, you know, they have this like goal in mind, but then they get into all these shenanigans. They're loud. They break stuff. They fight with each other. They make jokes. I wish I wrote down some of my favorite jokes in this movie because, man, it got me laughing so many times. There's a lot of good ones. There's a lot of good ones. But I want to make the first Stranger Things comparison. Do it. What I brought up a lot, what I bring up on the podcast and off of it is that I love the way that the kids act. I love that they're all overacting, you can say, if you want to call it that. I just Mm -hmm. say they're just like very passionate. It's like this, you know, Goonies came first. I love the way that they act in Stranger Things. 
and is very similar to how they act here. They're like very loud. They curse. You know, they're like always doing something. They have so much energy. Same thing as Stranger Things. Yeah, they're they're biking everywhere. They're riding yeah. their bikes to all these different locations. They're uh, they're running around the place. And I like that. It feels more natural in a way. No one's waiting for each other to talk. Kids aren't going to do that. They're just going to be really loud. They want to say what they want to say. They're impatient. They're like they want to touch things, figure things out. Yeah, they're like, let's do this. Yeah. I love it. I love how headfirst they go into these, uh, into this adventure, into this one-eyed Willie treasure. It's so cool. The fact that the the one-eyed Willie thing overall, I love it. Just that pirate the whole angle. Idea. Yeah, it's so cool. The ship is beautiful. It's just a sea of thieves dream right there. I didn't know we were going into a pirate movie. That's what and, I loved. <laughs> I was going to say, and did it pleasantly surprise you? It did. I was very happy with it. Dun, 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 dun. But yeah, I love how the the setup for it. You know, they. I guess his dad... You know, I didn't really get his dad's role too much in the movie. Yeah. But he, he does he collect do? these artifacts Yes, for a museum. I don't know if he works at a museum. I, I don't really get that. But when they were driving off to start their adventure, they're like, hey, dad, you know, like they they ride past him and he's in front of the museum. So I don't know if he works there or not, but he definitely contributes in some way. And I guess that's why he has all this cool stuff, historic stuff. Yeah. And I just love it. It starts with Sean Astin. He's Mikey, right? Yeah. It starts with his story that his dad, the story his dad tells him about how one eye Willie you know, he found all this treasure, hoarded it on his ship. And then I, I forgot who comes after him. But it's like it, it turns into a full on war to come after the treasure. And then he gets caved in. That's the part that I miss that. Well, I heard it, but I forgot it as I was watching the movie where the ship, he sails into a cave to try to get away. And then it, it just gets caved in and it stays right there in the goondocks underneath this whole time. And just to find it, you know, something that you would never think that would be there. Like, oh, it's just a, a fairy tale. You know, it's just a story that dad tells you to put you to sleep. But it's not it was a great setup. A, it's not just a story. It's real. One-Eyed Willie is real. Captain Willie. <laughs> That's He's Captain, a real deal. Captain One-Eyed Willie to you. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I want to get to my... Biggest takeaway from this movie. Okay. My biggest takeaway and what I feel like affected me the most. And that's the idea of the the homes foreclosing and using the land there just to make a golf course or, or a, a country, country club, club or whatever. Yeah. And the whole theme for me is the underlying last moments for the Goonies. And... I don't know. There's just something really sad about it, special about it, very important. And I feel like for a long time, only Mikey understood the stakes of what was going on. Um, I wrote here, I think, when Mouth first walks into the house, he's kind of saying, like, what are we doing? Come on, we should be out. We should be celebrating. He said, this is the last Goonie weekend. You know, this is the last moments they have before everyone has to move out. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's the whole theme of the movie in my eyes. Cause then Mikey, he's the one that takes that and like really tries to reinforce that this is it, you know, this is their last adventure. This is the last time they'll hang out. If they can't find these riches, they can't save the goondocks. They'll right outside the, that restaurant or cafe, whatever that they found, you know, the, run down one where the Fratellis are staying at or hiding yeah. out at. Mm -hmm. As they got away, just barely, Chunk was saying, like, let's just go home. You know, like, it's time for dinner. Our parents are worried. Let's just go home. And then Mikey says, like, in a couple hours, there'll, there'll be no home. You know, this is our time. We have to do this now. Like, there's, it's pretty much like this is their only hope. You know, and I feel like that's what cemented the whole theme of this movie for me. And it felt like this is extra special because it's not very moment, not very many moments in your life where, you know, like 
this is the last time you're going to do this. This is the last time you're going to be with these people. And all I'm thinking about is like school, you know, if you have like graduation or yeah, if you know you're moving and you have neighborhood friends, those are the few times in life that you know it's over and the final moments you have to really enjoy. And that's how I was seeing it through that lens. And I don't know. Did you get that? Did you feel like this is really special? Like they have to make the best of it. They have to go on this adventure. I felt like the other kids besides Mikey, even Brand, like they settled. They were like, oh, yeah, I guess we're moving away. Like they've already in a way like mourned or or lost it. But Mikey was the one that was hanging on. And so that's why throughout the movie, he's kind of the only one that repeatedly reminds the group, hey, this is it. This is our last weekend, our last adventure together. You know, we're trying to save the goondock kind of thing. But I guess I didn't really consider it until just now when you were talking about it. It didn't. The movie can be so like in a good way. It's very chaotic, very funny, very, uh, you know, hey, you guys kind of thing. But. Uh, I did kind of lose focus on the heart of the mission and that's that they were trying to have this one last hurrah before they all move away. Yeah. I feel like um, that's just what I got from it, you know, because obviously the whole point is the adventure, the journey, the The, laughs, the friends we make along the way. Exactly. Exactly. But I just couldn't get that out of my mind. I feel like even if there wasn't riches at the end of this, because that was uh, Mikey's goal too. Like, hey, we could find this, these diamonds and we could find the gold treasure. coins. Yeah, we can our... save, we can save our home. Yeah, stop the house from being foreclosed. Even if they couldn't find it, and even if that wasn't the adventure, I feel like they still needed a big, ad- some Adve- sort of adventure, some yeah. sort of hanging out, some big celebration. Like, hey, this is our last time that we could do this all together. Yeah, because I think everybody was moving to different places. I think uh, Data mentioned Detroit. I don't know if he was going to move there, but Mouth was saying like, oh, yeah, it's the highest uh, crime rate over there. And, <laughs> you know, things like that. Like they weren't planning on staying together. Obviously, their parents have to go to where it's more Wherever practical for them. They can find jobs or family. Yeah. You know, all these things. Yeah. So as I was watching, that's what I felt. I felt like this is their final moments. This is so important right now. And I just compare it to like some of the examples I brought up is like in in middle school when I was going from middle school to high school, we the school took us to like a, just like a park with sprinklers and all the water works were on and we were having like water gun fights and stuff like that. And it was so fun. And I remember just like hanging out with all my friends. And I had that moment where it's like, wow, we're not going to do this again. I'm not even. Oh, yeah, I'm not gonna, even going to see them anymore. But it was all the emotions were so elevated. It was so exciting and fun. And yeah, the next time was high school graduation and everybody was laughing. It was awesome. Everyone's family was there. And it's like, wow, this is the last time this is going to happen, though. The last time we have to meet up with each other, obligated to yeah. meet up with each other, you know, like <laughs> mandatory. Yeah, and that's it. And I feel like there's very few moments where you can know and the reason I'm saying that, like the where you know, is because I'm sure you heard or, or read online that like the sad statement of like, uh, you know, your mom or your dad picked you up one last time and you didn't know that it was the last time. Those have been my times. <laughs> I've never had a moment where I've sat back and been like, wow, this is the last time I'm hanging out with everyone it's always been the i didn't know that was the last time yeah you didn't know that's the thing and that's even sadder do you think yeah i was gonna ask you which one's sadder like to know that is over or to feel like whoa we're not we're not doing that anymore we're not hanging out it just ended i i feel like to me as somebody who's gone through multiple wow i can't believe it's over i didn't know it was over i feel like that's sadder because you don't really get to make your peace with it you didn't get to make that last hangout a good or a, a memorable hangout. It was just kind of an everyday thing. And then I, I'm, I'm never, it's like, I'm never going to see that person again. I'm never going to hang out with that person again, unless, you know, something happens. But I think that's a little bit sadder than being like, Hey, it's been a good ride. 
for me, I would say it's sadder to know because oh, the other way, the other way, kind of on the other side, huh? <laughs> no, I'll, I'll say it because I feel like when you don't know, it kind of just fades. And to use an example of, you know, one time your father picked you up and then he never picked you up again. To use that example is like, oh, yeah, I guess I didn't really think about that. You know, it kind of just stopped happening. And then, you know, just like one day you stop playing with toys. One day you stop knocking on each other's door and riding scooters outside and stuff. But what if you knew like, all right, son, today is the last day I'm going to pick you up. He's like, what? Why? <laughs> no, don't stop. <laughs> well, make it no. good. <laughs> make, pick me up high. Or like imagine all your friends said like, all right, today's the last day we're hanging out. Like, wait, what do you mean? Like, yeah, we're all moving. Like, no, no, I'll spend the whole day being sad. Just like in my mind. I don't know, Tom. I think it's sadder to <laughs> have not known and then you realize it. I had a situation where I was in school. I was in first grade. My best friend's name was Hannah. And we did everything together in school. We were always with each other. And my mom like knew her mom. And I remember when it was summer vacation coming around, we lived in different sides of town. And I remember telling her like, oh, okay, I'll see you in August. And she was like, yeah, I'll see you in August. And then August came going into second grade and I was put in a different school. My mom enrolled me in a private school. And I was like, wait, so I'm not going to see Hannah? And my mom's like, no, she goes to a different school now. You're going to a new school. And I it's like I and I was like, no. <laughs> it's like, quick, can I call her and tell her? And my mom's like, I don't have her number. And I'm like, <laughs> That's it. Uh, it's over. It's over. I wow. never got to say goodbye. I don't even know where she is, what she's doing. Hannah, we hope you're okay. Hannah, if you're listening, I miss you. <laughs> you were a great friend. This is Caroline, first grade. I gave you my Pringles. You gave me your cheese sticks. It was, a, it was a good time. We hope you're holding it down over there in Montana doing all right. <laughs> or Wyoming or whatever. <laughs> I, yeah, I mean, we covered both angles, so I think, <laughs> I think a, that's fair. I think instead of having a sad off, we can agree that both situations are equally sad. Is, is Yeah, we'll just say like, um, we'll oh. say when you don't see it coming, you're being emotionally ghosted. And, yeah, uh, no, that's a good. That's a good. When phrase. you know it's coming, then you're being slapped <laughs> in the face, and they both hurt. They both hurt. They hurt. But yeah, and since we're on the topic, I think um, I'm gonna assume your favorite scene might be my favorite scene. I don't know. I mean, the the pirate ship is a big one to top, but just uh, Mikey's speech. Yeah, feels very important. Yep, we have the same favorite scene, and that encompasses my feelings about the movie and I think the theme of the movie, you know, just saying like, that's their time. And this is our time down I here. I love and it. He's like, our parents up there, they're working, making money. That's their time. But down here, us, this is our time. I was like, I felt that. It's he, powerful. I don't know where he got that from, but I think that's just Sean Aston because Sean Aston. He's seen, good at delivering. Yeah. Those, yeah. 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 Speeches. Yes. There's a good, <laughs> There's a good there's good in the world, Mr. Frodo, and it's worth fighting for. <laughs> oh, I'm crying all over again. <laughs> it's like in the stories they tell you. Full of darkness and danger they were. It's wonderful. It's amazing. And then I wrote down a line. He said, The next time you see the sky, it'll be over another town. Oh, how does he whip out this poetry on, it, in the moment, you know? John Aston is just a born wax poet. He just the next knows. time you take a test, it'll be in another school. You know, I feel like wow. he's nailing exactly what I feel. Yeah. This is it. A- appreciate it. Appreciate the people around you, man. It, w- it was a- very good. Appreciate your friends, this adventure, this journey. And then the, you know, that's their time up there. It makes perfect sense because it's like the parents are thinking about what's best for them and the kids, obviously, but they have to make decisions from their point of view. Mm -hmm. And they said, this is our time here. Like we can actually make a change. You know, if if they find these riches, they could do something. And this is their one shot at doing it. Yeah. So, yeah, I was into this, Caroline. (laughs) 
I'm glad. I really, I, you know, for a good while, I thought like, oh, this movie's not a scary movie. I'm sorry, Tony. Not a scary I, movie. Sorry. I've robbed you of of watching a spoopy film for El Boonage, but sometimes Halloween is not always about the scares. It's about the friends we make along the way. It's about the bigger emotional scares of. <laughs> losing your friends along the way yeah it's about the emotional scarring you didn't know you had yeah the long-term scares of childhood trauma of being forced out of your beautiful childhood neighborhood the long-term and scares separated of, from your friends of what if the friends you have now are not the friends you have five years from now why do you have to say that <laughs> i'm already on the brink of crying <laughs> no <laughs> And I can't carry on in this <laughs> emotional state. This is like that Toy Story episode all over again. <laughs> oh, man. Tony, I have a question for you. Yeah, what's up? Out of the Goonies, which one are you? Which one am I? <laughs> yeah. Thanos, obviously. <laughs> Not who you yeah, want to be. Bring him up. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> you were waiting. It was a matter of time. <laughs> you I was waiting. gonna bring up in the intro. You were lying. Oh, I knew yeah. you were. I could feel it. I could feel it. When I saw Josh Brolin run across the credits of the opening scene of this film, I knew we gotta mention Thanos. <laughs> it put a smile on my face. <laughs> oh, I'm sure it did. I'm sure it did. <laughs> By the way, this movie debunks what I thought. Uh, the Josh Brolin effect that he always sounds like Thanos. Yes, this goes all the way back to episode one of Elbow Nudge, where I said anything, he always sounds like Thanos. I didn't hear Thanos in this movie. You just heard Josh. Josh Brolin. Brolin yeah. See, how old was he filming this movie? Let's see. I'm gonna guess and say 17. Okay, you're gonna guess. I'm gonna do the math. Actually, no. He might be older. He probably is supposed to be 17 in the movie. And then How old do in you real think life he is. I'll say twenty. Okay. Twenty do, do, in real do, life. Do, 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 do. All right, Tony. The results are in. Okay. You've locked in at twenty, right? Yes. Final answer. Incorrect. You went over. He is seventeen <gasps> at the making of this film. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, he's an, he's actual, an actual teenager. teenager. <laughs> We did not get grease lightning. Wow. <laughs> All right. He is actually 17. That might be why you didn't see the full Thanos effect. He's like a baby nah. Thanos at this point. His hand didn't look big enough yet to his fit the gauntlet. His chin wasn't as defined. Yeah. He also had, you know, the sweatpants and the shorts over it. Well, he was in the makings of greatness there. That's, that's a Titan outfit. <laughs> that, that training that he's doing, that's because, you know, he's training to be the Mad Titan. That's right. You see this, Tony? I'm sending the Discord. That, that's a Thanos in <laughs> training. That's what it is. That's, that's already that him is. on his throne. Look at that. That's amazing. You didn't even see his chin regimen yet. They kept it a secret. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's doing chin lifts. It's like a push up, but your chin's on the ground and you're a bit pushed up by your chin. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so you have a Goonie for yourself? You know, I, I wanted your help with this. I wanted, okay. uh, you know, I kind of think maybe I can be Data because uh, I, I would say Data. Okay. I, I was thinking Data and I was even thinking Chunk because I know that's not, you know, I, I can dig into an ice cream. <laughs> I can be a little loud. I think we could all relate to Chunk. <laughs> And our eating habits. There's a little bit of chunk in all of us. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. But I thought for a second, I was like, you know what? I think if I have to pick somebody, I'm probably Data. Data. I would say Data. I was trying so to I think, think. I think we both got our perfect representations in the movie. I was trying to think of who Davy is. And I was like, hmm. Hmm. You got what in mind. Hmm. Maybe he it? can be Mikey because I feel like <laughs> Davy's got that like sweetums, but also kind of sicky vibe. When he was young, Davy always like sicky I was. Vibe? I was the older sister that always had to be like, "Davy, are you okay? You know, go sit down. You're out of breath. You know, kind of thing." Sicky vibe. Well, you know, like 
<sighs> I'm sorry, Davey. Sikki and what's that? What I don't want to put you on blast, Dave. <laughs> When Davey was younger, he would always get like winded. He would always get out of breath. He wasn't asthmatic, but you know, oh. he was just like he would o- he would play too much and overexert himself, and then he would feel like really tired and really sick. So, as like the older sibling, I would be the one that's like, "Hey, settle down. You know, let's sit down over here. Let's take a break." All right, I got you. So sicky. Just yeah, just kind of sicky. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm an asthmatic. Can I be Mikey too? You're an asthmatic. Yeah, <laughs> you, you I'm my to- inhaler. Wait, really? Yeah. I did not know this. Discover- I don't whip it out and, you know, take a puff. You don't say hi. <laughs> you don't introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Tony and I have asthma. No, no. No, I actually use it very rarely, but I do have one. But yeah. So you want to be Mikey or do you want to be Brand? And I can make flubs like like nobody's business. <laughs> You know, on the rewatch, it was so funny. I didn't notice, but he gets it from his mom. You know how he says words wrong? He's like, yeah, yeah, that's what I said. Like, Bran will correct him. He's like, yeah, yeah, that's exactly what I said. I forgot what words, but I know he said it with, uh, yeah, with booty yeah, yeah. traps. He's like, oh, and his booty traps. And then and then Dana's like, booby traps. Booby like, yeah, that's what I said. Yeah. That's what I said. Yeah. He would always say that. He's like, that's what I said. And then his mom, when um when Brand was tied up on the on the couch... He's like, can you get me out of here? And then she's like, oh, why are you trying all these weird exercises? Um, you're going to hi- hyper escalate or something like that. He's like, mom, hyperventilate. She's like, that's what I said. <laughs> and then she goes to the kitchen. <laughs> I'm like, wow, like mother, like son. <laughs> I get it. I think that's another tick with Davey because I'm thinking of Av- <laughs> I'm thinking of Avowed. <laughs> For our listeners, I'm sorry. I don't want to explain the context and embarrass my brother, but I'll just say, you know what? There's a little bit of Mikey in all of us, right? We all mess up. Can we say that? We all mess up. Oh, it definitely if 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 anybody after Davy is Mikey, it's me. The, the our Google Doc proves it with all the time. We have evidence. We have actual evidence of that. By the way, when I was editing Oh no. <laughs> I think it was a psycho episode, actually. Very recently. You oh, said no. red qualms again. <laughs> no! I didn't send it because, you know, we already had the original. We had the first edition of bread qualms. <laughs> and I'm like, this is redundant. But, you know, I heard it and I enjoyed it. It didn't take long. And you said bread back. crumbs uh, like three seconds before you said bread qualms again. <laughs> I used it up. I used to, because you know, it's in ever since the initial breadcrumbs, it's in my head when I say breadcrumbs. And it's like I'm yeah. saving it up. I'm like, all right, Caroline, you're going to say the word breadcrumbs. And then it's like, I used it up. And so when I use the word again, there it was. You're, you're in your head. You're in your head. I am in my head about it. But it's all right. There's a little Mikey in all of us. We all mess <laughs> up. I have some good ones too, but I just don't send myself these clips, you know. I'm not going to do that. Of course you're not. Right. Whenever I hear it on editing, sometimes <laughs> I like to relish in it a bit. But yeah, we should. We should. <laughs> if it's funny, we should. <laughs> I'm thinking though. Are you brand? Hmm. I guess you do work. Why out wouldn't a lot. I be? You do work out a lot, and you are the oldest of the group. I eat a lot of pub subs, <laughs> and I'm the oldest. Yes. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> You're the oldest out of everybody on this planet. That's correct. <laughs> That's correct. I look after everyone. Mm. You know. You're like a watcher, like an eternal. Yeah. Sitting on my sofa out in the porch. We got to get you that red headband that he wears. I would wear it. You would rock it? I would wear it, yeah. Did you see Josh Brolin wearing it in like a Halloween costume? Or like for the 50th. You dress up as a brand? Yeah, yeah. For the 50th anniversary of the Goonies. Oh, that's awesome. Here, let me send it to you. Dang, you look good. Yeah, look at it. Wow. (laughs) Wow. He even, he went on an interview with Jimmy Fallon and check this out. He's still, hang on. Did I put? Wait, but he's missing the shorts over the sweat. Oh, no, he has it. He has it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He great. has it. He, All right. he has wow. it. He's wearing he, the sweatpants. This is why he's one of the best of our time, Carolyn. <laughs> Attention to detail, amazing. 
I can't paste this. It's ruining my vibe. All right. Your sicky vibe? I didn't say I had a sicky vibe. I said Davey had one I when said we were it. younger. Wow. Wow. I said it. <laughs> I took one Zyrtec and a Ricola before the recording, and I have a sicky vibe. Oh, actually, yeah, you really do. <laughs> you really do. Yeah, yeah. That's another thing. We all have sicky vibes here. You know, <laughs> there's plenty of episodes I've done where I'm halfway on my bed. High school musical, too. We don't have to name them. Mm, that's just, you know. Let it blend. Let it blend in if people don't notice. That just comes to mind. All All right, so, he's, he's, so he's wearing a bandana and a suit at Jimmy Fallon's interview. I'm, for... try- I'm trying to post the photo, but Jimmy Fallon is also wearing a bandana. <laughs> <laughs> a red they're, bandana? Yeah, they're all rocking the brand look. Okay, that's awesome. I'm I'm very happy to see this. Yeah, he he loves it. He loves that role. I wonder if it's his first. That's a good question. He was 17 years old. Yeah, that's a young one. Oh, look yeah. at that. Tony, I can confirm this is his first role. So he's he's honoring his, his first step into cinema. Yes. Nice. This is another significant part of this movie because this is the beginning. This is the beginning of his career. This is the start of what yeah. will eventually become. His greatest role. <laughs> I, yeah, I wasn't going to say it. I history. knew you were going to say I, it. We don't have to say it. We all know. We all know. It's been said. But yes. His greatest role. <laughs> it's True Grit 2010. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to mention that, but the thought did cross my mind. Like, say an opposite role? No, we, we know. <laughs> we know which one it is. In 2018, it was a very significant role that he played. For Tony. Are, you still, are you still looking for the Jimmy Fallon photo? Uh, you know, I think I gave up on it. I found right, it, fine. but it's too big. Like, I can't put it in Discord. That's fine. We'll watch it later. I want to bring up, I don't know if you dug into it, but the deleted octopus scene. I didn't. You know what? Also, I should be transparent with you. I have no notes for this movie. It's all about. Oh, the con- yeah. That's what I like to hear. It's all about the conversation. You're going from episode. the heart. It's all heart. I have nothing. Prepared. Like, this episode is our moment. Okay. <laughs> out there this is our time that's their time but here in this recording it's yeah, our time that's right i'm going full conversation right now wow so you're engaged you're yeah listening of course i'm always listening all right. to you definitely yeah all right all right perfect perfect so let's talk about this octopus yeah please so you looked into it uh yeah a little bit and um i'm sure everyone knows who's seen the goonies um there's a scene where Data, he's being interviewed by the news and they're asking him like, hey, what happened? How'd you guys get out? And he's like, there was this octopus. It was so scary, blah, blah, blah. And then if you didn't see it in theaters and apparently there's still the octopus cut somewhere out there. I was shot and look for it. Uh, I had to look it up on YouTube, but I wanted to watch the whole film with the octopus cut. Yeah, I couldn't find it. But Aww. anyway, there. There was a version where there was an octopus that they actually fought on their way to to the Inferno, Willie's ship. Mm-hmm. And it just got cut. But the line where he says we fought an octopus was still in the movie. So it's kind of out of place. And I was reading comments about it and people were saying like, oh, um, I thought he was just like so um like filled with adrenaline after being saved and you know being done with the adventure that he was just kind of saying anything i'm like oh that would make sense like yeah you have to make something of it because why would he say that they fought an octopus when it's so specific and they didn't do anything close to that but there was a cut where they did and you can see it on youtube i personally think is very cool because i'm fascinated with the kraken oh yeah and- and the octopus is just such a cool alien looking creature, but that exists on Earth. And yeah, first you can look at the clip, but um, I think they use like some practical. I think they use maybe some CG. I didn't notice, but it starts grazing Steph while she's being followed by mouth. And she thinks that it's him touching her. 
<gasps> and she's like, could you stop? And he's like, I'm not doing anything. And then it happens again. And she's like, come on, mouth. I'm not joking. You know, things like that. And then they finally realize it's an octopus. And then they're all freaked out. They're fighting it. I think mouth. Yeah, it is mouth. He goes down underwater to bite one of the tentacles. And Data gets the idea to get his cassette player, start playing loud music. I forgot what song. And then he's like, he stuffs it in the octopus mouth. And then that's what makes it like swim away. And that's how they defeat it. Wow. In some descriptions, I heard that it danced away. <laughs> I don't, I hope that's not the intention. But I, I liked seeing it. I wish it was in there. But if it danced away, you know, and they defeated it by the power of music, I can see why it might be a little. <laughs> Say it lame yep <laughs> and um the person who believes this there's a person who believes this and there's a person who believes that it shouldn't have been in the movie and they're glad that it's not is sean astin he <gasps> thinks the octopus was lame <laughs> <laughs> wow he was asked about it I, I don't know where some convention or something and they asked him like hey what was up with that octopus scene who decided to write it in and who cut it out blah 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 he didn't really know the specifics but then he got into like why he didn't like it. And he said, like, yeah, it's lame and it wasn't good and blah, blah, blah. And he says he remembers it on set and he thought it looked dumb. I'm like, oh, <laughs> I thought it looked so cool. <laughs> I was watching the clip as you were like narrating it. It was a beautiful uh -huh. moment. And oh, I, I saw it. I saw it dance away. It looked like it was moonwalking with all those tentacles. Really? Yeah. Dang. And it, it kept that cassette player. You know what, though? I kind of wish that they would have fought something in this movie. Like that octopus. Maybe not with the power of music. Because that, you know, that is a little lame. It's a little lame. That's, that's, a, little, that's a little lame. It's a little lame. I would have liked it if they had like one of the swords from the dead pirates on that ship and sliced tentacles off. Yeah. That would have been real cool. I would have loved for them to fight something. And if they sliced one, that could have been enough. And then it could yeah. have swam away. Cause of yeah. That, that would have been enough to be like, oh, that's it. You know, I'm scared. I'm running away. But when I read about this, I think I read it before we saw the movie. And it's just something that, you know, it popped back up when we were watching. I'm like, oh, that's what they were talking about. And they were saying it was supposed to be like a small Kraken type creature. And that's what got me more excited. I'm like, that's awesome. Pirates, Kraken, of course. That's perfect. But it really was just an octopus. But the only part that I thought was their intention to make it a kraken was like it has a beak you know like a beak shape yeah mouth. and then that's where he stuffed the cassette and the only you know i don't spend a lot of time looking at octopus but um <laughs> in sea of thieves i've seen a kraken mm -hmm. and they have a beak the kraken, the kraken definitely, has a beak. yeah the kraken has a beak so I had to dig a little deeper, Caroline, and I came up with nothing. But I was trying to find out if octopus in real life have a beak. Does an octopus have a beak? And it seems like maybe yes, but I don't know. It looks like it's a yes. An octopus does have a beak. It's got to be certain types because I've seen some where there's no beaks anywhere, like certain... like from their head or below where the tentacles are like there's no beak does a squid have a beak i think so yes a squid has a beak yeah i'm looking at this octopus and i'm seeing a beak but it's not the beak that we see from the kraken and from the goonies octopus it's a very different looking beak right and that would make sense you know they're gonna take creative liberties on the beak and the whole design. But that was the extent of my research. I think they were trying to make a Kraken, but their practical effects maybe were not at the level they wanted it to be. So yeah. with that puppet making and, you know, things like that. And they were like, they, you know, they, they got what they got already with the octopus. And then already that scene was like, okay, this is not, this doesn't look that great. Let's just cut it out. <laughs> Yeah, and they can't make a ginormous Kraken either. Because that would just take... Like, they didn't have Pirate's money, Pirate's budget, you know, for this. 
<sighs> Pirates of the Caribbean I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. I was just thinking like imagine if instead of like getting the octopus if instead we just saw giant tentacles come up beside the ship of one i willy like in sea of thieves sea of thieves style yeah yeah just giant tentacles that could have been really cool because you don't really see the beak of the kraken until the kraken picks you up and tries to like eat you you never see it until they add the later tall tales until they added added uh pirate's life in season three and that's when yeah. you finally see the crack yeah you're right but before that it was just the tentacles yeah that would have been cool if the water got inky black and then the tentacles oh. came up and they're and they're the, on the inferno already and the then they're slashing starts, at it. The music starts changing. Yeah, synth. Oh. Pirate synth. Oh. <laughs> oh, I gotta find out if they made a eerie synth. Pirates of the music. Caribbean synth remix. <laughs> oh, I'm. It's gotta be out there. When it's I was look be. during our um, Stranger Things episode, when I was editing for the highlight. I found so many variations of synth music to play in the background. It's got to be out there. Ooh. Speaking of Stranger Things again. Stranger Things. The synth inspiration. A- everything right. inspiration in this Goonies. Yeah. Even like the girls tagging along, very Barb and Nancy, and then later yeah. Robin and Nancy. And then uh, the four kids, definitely the four boys. What I want to say, though, we've seen a lot of movies that, you know, the Duffer brothers have plucked from Mm -hmm. and a lot, you know, a lot from these movies. But I still got to say, I think Stranger Things is from everything that they took is still very original. You know, this isn't Stranger Things episode, but I'm just saying I think they took so much from so many sources that they really did make their own thing. and. It's just cool to see where it all started from, you know, the kids, bike riding, kids cursing and yelling, adventure, synth music, all that. I definitely think that they have found that perfect happy medium where you're inspired by all of these amazing films and stories and tropes, but you still make something very original, very cool, very great. They definitely found that that happy medium with making Stranger Things. Because I had always heard from the beginning, it was like, I knew two things about the Goonies. I knew, hey, you guys. And I knew, oh, it's Stranger Things. Like, it's basically Stranger Things. Yeah. And you know what? I, other than the, 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 I think just the dynamics, the four kids, the older brother, the girls, that's the only time where I saw like the group consistency and i was like that's very stranger things and that was it i wasn't like watching a scene and being like that's stranger things that's stranger things yeah but you saw just the i don't know what you call it the not the exact adventurers and things that go on but just the characteristics and yeah side inspirations i guess yeah it was still enough to be like Okay, yeah, like Stranger Things, it's still its own thing, but you can definitely see how it took inspiration from the Goonies. Yeah. And of course, they both have Sean Astin. Oh. Oh. I didn't make that connection. Bob Newby. Bob Newby, superhero. Superhero. Amazing. Oh, could we get Josh Brolin in season five <gasps> of Stranger Things? If Josh Brolin is in Stranger Things, you will have a conniption. <laughs> <laughs> I'm already so excited for season five. Yeah. This will be... The icing on the cake. Yeah, th- this will take it to the moon, baby. Caroline, pull up the Duffer Brothers Twitter. We have a tweet to write. Yeah. <laughs> Log into the Elmore Nudge Twitter. <laughs> Hold on a second. <laughs> <laughs> At... <laughs> What's their, I think they're at us what stranger stranger writers or something. <laughs> is it really? Yeah, I think it is. Yeah, stranger writers. All right, we'll say Josh Brolin, Stranger Things five question mark, and yeah. then is there like a little Thanos emoji? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I think they have their own Twitter. Yeah, the Duffer Bros. Okay. All right, at the Duffer Bros. <laughs> Josh Brolin, Strange, pl- Stranger Things Stranger season things five, five, plus Josh Brolin equals success. Equals question mark no. success. 
am I right? Question mark. <laughs> and it's not am I right? Am I right? It's this. I know. I know. I know exactly what you're writing. Yeah. Yep. Am I right? <laughs> Tweet. Did All you right. find the Thanos emoji? Uh, you know, I there's no Thanos emoji, Tony, but which emoji in the spectrum of emojis would be a Thanos? I'm thinking like a purple heart. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's good. Okay, purple Wait, heart. Wait, so the, does Twitter have seasonal emojis? Because I know when certain shows and movies come out, they make an emoji for that. Yeah, I think that's wise to call them seasonal emojis. It's like trending emojis. And they don't oh. last, you know, the whole time. I can't tweet like there was one for I'm trying to remember what the last one I used was like Genshin Impact. There was one for Genshin Impact um, during their anniversary celebration. But I think now if you were to tweet that, you wouldn't see the emoji anymore. Man. So they're treating it like NFTs or something. I think it's like a paid promotional time kind of thing. Like you gotta you save it somehow. You have to pay Twitter to be like, hey, can you use these emojis during this period of time for our hashtag? I gotcha. Okay. Pretty smart on them. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right, Duffer Bros, don't let me down. Yeah, we'll see. Can you imagine? I think you can very well imagine for the both of There'll us. There'll be no reason for him to be in this season. <laughs> but if he does show up, we had a butterfly effect influence on Stranger Things. Bye. We can move on. <laughs> By tweeting at them, planting the seed, of course, Caroline. Telling them, hmm, Josh Brolin, perhaps. <laughs> You're going to take credit for it, even though I didn't really tweet them right now? No, no, now. no. You didn't hit send? <laughs> hit send. I need to log into our Twitter account. I can't we find We will the- do it. <laughs> we will do it. Come on. That would be so awesome. <laughs> Hang Come on. Come on, Caroline. All I'm right. switch yeah. I'm switching accounts. All right. I'm gonna continue on to the next idea I got. Okay. I'm in the podcast account. I'm looking. All right. We have zero followers on Twitter. This is fine. I don't yeah, spend, we're, we're not gonna ruin our non reputation right now. <laughs> I don't spend a lot of time on our podcast Twitter. But the duffers do spend time on twitter you know they, they spend more i wonder if stranger writers is their new account or if that's something else hmm. okay but continue i'm gonna tweet this out i guess all right thank you so another thing i want to bring up i love genuine bromances in movies <laughs> go on oh so sloth and chunk Oh, yeah. I love yeah. what was going on there. I love how they built their relationship. They got along. Sloth came to the rescue to bust out both of them from their prison. And then just from then on, they developed a, a bromance. And then at the very end, I love when, you know, Sloth, I think Sloth was the first one to say, Sloth loves Chunk. And, then, you know, he helped him out when he was yeah. holding the boulder. And then at the very end, Chunk goes, you're going to stay with me, Sloth. I'm going to take care of you because I love you. It's like, oh, there's no joke here. They're just being honest with each other. They didn't undercut it. You know, it wasn't a moment to, to laugh at. They're just sharing honest emotion. And I love that. I love that there was no joke too. Like none of the other guys were making fun of them or yeah. anything. It's just a genuine like, yeah, I'm going to take care of you. You're going to come live with me, Sloth. Yeah. They all stood up for Sloth. Yeah. Like, no, no, no. Don't shoot. Those are the bad guys. Those are the bad guys. And then he even picked up one of the police officers. <laughs> yeah. He was like almost strangling him up in the air. Like, no, put him down, Sloth. It reminds you know me of, was, oh yeah, go, what? you go ahead, you go ahead. I was going to change subject a little bit, but we'll, we'll stick my, with this. My last comment was Chunk ran up and was blocking Sloth with a Domino's pizza box. <laughs> he used it like a Captain America shield. He's like, no, no, don't shoot. <laughs> but yeah, go ahead. He had him on the ropes. Yeah, yeah. 
I was going to say, it reminded me of Slappy and the Stinkers because that's how that movie goes. They befriend like a seal or a walrus and the walrus is like going to get taken in by animal control. And the kids are like, no, 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 you can't take him down. They're all like in front of the walrus. I haven't seen this movie. You got It's a young Scarlett Johansson. She's been in the game for a while. Yeah, she has. I don't even know what her first movie is because she's been since a kid acting i wonder she's if she's been it's, in cinema for a long time i wonder if it's slapping in the stinkers <laughs> oh i don't know how old was she in slapping in the stinkers is that a real movie title yeah it is for a real movie in our world yes not like a movie in the simpsons or anything no okay. i i saw this movie as a child through a simpsons episode or like a real from hollywood video i would rent the vhs oh, all right all right it doesn't sound like a fake movie title. Oh, you know what? It's not Scarlett Johansson. I think I just got Mandela <gasps> affected. Oh. It's a girl named Scarlett Palmers, but she does look a well, lot like... a Scarlett, like, Yeah, it's a Scarlett, but I Whoa. was wrong. It's all right. It doesn't happen very often. <laughs> uh, contraire, sir. Scarlett we'll move on. Yeah. Thank you. I did just send out the tweet, too. All right, nice. There we go. The butterfly now effect. Now we can have started. a butterfly effect. <laughs> oh, can you imagine <laughs> the announcement? Josh Brolin casted in Stranger, Stranger Things, Things 5. Five. You know how difficult that's going to be, especially after they said that they have too many characters. Yeah, and that they said they didn't want to add any new yeah. ones in Stranger <laughs> yeah. Things Five. Yeah. <laughs> we'll wait and see. We'll wait and see for Josh Brolin to end up on Jimmy Fallon, but instead of wearing a a red headband, or maybe he will be wearing a red headband. I don't know. Well, you think that's how he'll present himself once it's announced that he's in Stranger Things? He'll change. Here, Here's how I see it, Tony, in my mind's okay. eye. He'll be sitting on Jimmy Fallon's couch in front of the live studio audience known as The Tonight Show. Jimmy Fallon's already laughing. Jimmy Fallon is already cracking up at just the image of Josh Brolin in a red headband. Yeah. The Brolin, moment he walks in introducing Josh Brolin, he is already laughing. He is giggling in fits. But the moment happens where Josh Brolin says nothing, just merely looks at camera two, takes off the headband, and puts on Dustin's hat from season one. Yeah. Thinking cap. Oh, season one. All right. There's a color one. So he announces it himself. Yeah. The Duffers can't do it because then people are going to call them liars. Yeah. But if Josh Brolin does it, people are going to be like, oh, it's Josh Brolin and Stranger Things. Somebody's going to tell Josh Brolin that they don't want Perhaps this is more parallel thinking, Caroline. And this is more of the Duffers you know, stealing like an artist, just like the Russos are liars. And they said <laughs> Avengers four title was not said at all during infinity war. Yeah. Absolute liars. <laughs> We're in the end game, Tony. Yes. So we'll see if they had Sean Astin, you know, you know, maybe Josh Brolin is an actor. That's what led us to this. Yeah. Your, your connection to that. <laughs> Much better than my connection of Superman and and Brand wearing his shorts over his sweats. <laughs> Is Sean Astin still acting? I'm curious. What's he doing? I don't know. Oh, okay. maybe voice acting. Yeah, he is voice acting. He's the voice of Shazam in those Justice League movies that are animated. Oh, good for him. Yeah, pretty good. What you were gonna say? I was. I wanted to throw in a random fun fact. Yeah, Richard hit. Donner, director of the Goonies. Uh huh. Born in Bronx, New York. Oh wow. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, what what else has he done? He co he he produced Free Willy. I guess so. I'm looking at his. I just opened his Wikipedia. Okay. Look at that. That's pretty good. Yeah, he's not too shabby. Right? Oh, he he did the Omen. Ooh, spooky. I saw that. Yeah, I had no idea. He did. I didn't know he had it in him. Yeah, I'm like I don't know any of these other films. Well, you know uh, his Superman films. Lethal Weapon. Uh, yeah, but which one? Was oh, one of the sequels, right? Wow, well, he no, he did the first one. Oh, Lethal Weapon. 
He did oh, Lady okay. Hawk. What? He did Lady Hawk. That is what's that? One of my favorite films. Scarlett Johansson's in it. It is Matthew Broderick and oh yeah, Michelle Pfeiffer. Oh, nice. Rutger Hauer. I don't know if people would know him, but yeah, Michelle Pfeiffer, Matthew Broderick. I seen. I have seen this movie so many times. With my parents, because they love it, too. It's like one of those films. That so you're accidentally a Richard Donner fan. I'm accidentally a Richard Donner fan, yeah. Mm. I had no idea. This is the movie he made right after The Goonies. Wow. Look at that. Oh, yeah, and there it is, Superman. All these other ones I don't know, but Lady Hog, you've got me, sir. You've got me. That's enough. He is a producer on X-Men and X-Men Origins Wolverine. Ooh. But you know what? We all Let's make stop mistakes. Right there. We all make mistakes, Richard Donner. It's okay. We all need to cash a check every once in a while. Yeah, yeah. You know, we all need to get the bag. Yeah. I respect it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I uh, was looking at some of the trivia for this film just before you got on, on Discord. And I was reading that Sean Astin was able to keep the treasure map for a one-eyed yeah. release treasure. Yeah. And however, later on, years later, when he was already, you know, grown up and going to college and stuff, his mom found it and thought it was just a crinkled piece of paper and threw it away. That's exactly what it looks like. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I saw that because I was getting recommended like those YouTube shorts. Oh, yeah. yeah. And I didn't mention it because I I don't know if they're true or not. There's no reason for them to lie about it. But I didn't check IMDb, which I trust 100%. But um, <laughs> the other one I read, or I didn't read. Why am I saying I read it? The other one I saw was uh, apparently all the kids' reactions to the pirate ship was them seeing it for the first time. Oh, really? So Richard Donner didn't want to show them the pirate ship because they wanted like a real genuine reaction when they first saw it. That's cool. But the twist is oh. the, the take that they used for the movie was not the first take of them <laughs> seeing it. Did they? Uh, go on, go on. Because they were cursing. And so, <laughs> they were just like, <laughs> I guess like incoherent and just cursing seeing the the ship for the first time. They're like, whoa. Yeah. But I, I didn't confirm that with IMDb or my preferred source, Wikipedia. So <laughs> I saw that the little boy that plays Data his mom had told him not to use any bad words. His mom was like, you better not be cursing. So when he falls in the water, like in the scene where they're crossing that little bridge and he's like, holy S H I T. Oh, I love that. <laughs> That's why he says that is because his mom told him he's not allowed to curse. <laughs> he's a good kid. He's a good kid. He's a good kid. <laughs> Smart kid too. You reminded me of their, their uh, reunion. Well, you know, the on-screen parents. When, uh, remember the dad, he has like a go-go gadget camera that pops out of him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then it goes like all haywire and it doesn't work. And then he's like, it's okay, dad. You can't hug a photograph. And then he says, Aww. you're my greatest creation. Oh, I do. Yeah. Yeah. Very uh, very Iron Man too. Uh, yeah, I was gonna say very Howard Stark. <laughs> it all Howard Stark. it all comes back to the MCU. <laughs> it, we always, and by we I mean my mind. <laughs> by we I mean me. <laughs> is always channeling things through a filter of the MCU. Of the MCU. Ever since yeah. two thousand eight, your brain has just been wired this way. That's when it all changed. That was the figurative when the spider bit you moment. Oh, I wish I was bit by a spider. <laughs> no, you do not. Literal spider. <laughs> literally biting me. A literal, was it, what's the and term? I literally radioactive get spider. <laughs> yeah. I literally get infused with radioactive surge of poison. Of of power. Of raw Spider-Man power. Yeah. That was my wish for a long time. I bet it was. I bet it was. Mm-hmm. But Caroline, is there anything else you have? You know, on the Goonies. You know, anything I have, in your heart, anything in your mind. I have no notes. I just have what my heart tells me to say, and 
I was trying to think of anything else that I have for this film, but you know, I feel like you don't have to overthink this movie. There's not too much that needs to be said. It's a good time. It's an adventure. And I think that it still encompasses, while it may not be a scary movie, I do want to think that it still captures a part of the Halloween adventure that you have with your friends. And I think that it still deserves to have a place in the Halloween film subgenre. Mm. <laughs> now I'm not the one making stretches here anymore. Aww. <laughs> I'm not even the one putting it on these lists. I just saw them and I can confirm. I agree. No, I, I think it's fine. And I don't think it needs to be, I don't think it needs to fit anywhere. It's just a good movie. Oh, know? what do you think about the possibility of there being a sequel? No, thank you. Yeah, that's a, you know, that clip, that picture that I showed you of Josh Brolin, you know, and Jimmy Fallon, the headline underneath it is Josh Brolin tease is a Goonies 2 or a Goonies remake. And I don't think I want that. So they'll just get all the old cast back. Oh, I think some of them have already passed away, but yeah. yeah I didn't want to say that, but like. I was going to say all the cast that's still alive. The existing, the cast. Yeah. I don't know. I'm kind of happy with it just being this timeless classic. You know, it should be like E.T. You know, We don't need a remake or a sequel. It's just really, really hard to pull off a, a sequel after so long. You already know the one I'm thinking about. I don't have to say it. But, other you know, than, it's really hard other to perform the... a miracle of this kind where... <sighs> A beloved movie can be made into a sequel after decades and still be beloved and even better than before. So if you can't do it right, don't do it at all. I agree. Top Gun Maverick is amazing. <laughs> It's truly a feat. I was sitting there like Poe Dameron in The Force Awakens. Who's going to say it? Are you going to say it or am I going to say it? I knew you were going to say it. And I'll give a shout out to Creed as well. Creed (laughs) is very good. They continue to franchise. Well, you know, there wasn't a huge gap, but that was a great, I don't know, soft reboot or whatever. I can also, I I guess just like to represent to put their name in in the hat. I know Blade Runner 2049 was considered good by fans. Okay. I, I haven't seen it yet. I need to. It's always been on my queue. I just haven't had the time to sit down and watch Blade Runner, the first one or 2049. But I have heard from existing fans that they're like, yeah, that was a great sequel. You see? And then we could think of hundreds of examples of uh, where failure. It, yeah. Where that, that's what, three, three or four? Where it's just that works, but. That's three or four out of, yeah, hundreds where it's like, why they ruined it. They ruined our beloved franchise. And yeah, Mm. it's a very rare sighting to see a sequel after so many years be done well. So we'll say no to Goonies 2. Yeah, I think we can definitively say no to Goonies 2. And yes to Josh Brolin and Stranger Things 5. Can we call it Toonies? Are we saying yes or no to this? Should we end it right now? Or... <laughs> that was bad, right? That was bad. You said it was so much gusto. Can we call it Toonies? When it jumped to my mind, I didn't stop to think if it was a good idea. <laughs> Goonies 2, also known as Toonies. I think I'm done. Everybody, thank you so much for listening to this episode of El Boo Nudge. If you liked what you heard and you're a new listener, hit follow on whatever podcast platform you're listening to. If you're a returning listener, give us an honest review or hit that bell icon if you haven't already if you want updates and notifications when we upload. If you're hearing us on YouTube, you know the drill. Like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon for more news. Thank you for listening, everyone, especially if you're a new listener and you like a boo nudge. <laughs> I'll leave you with the question. Oh, this is new. Oh, OK, OK. <clears throat> Very simple. I like it. Are you a data kind of person or a data kind of person? 
Oh. That's it.